Hello, my name is Honey Badger Actual. This video is a, one of the Sapper training video series. Uh, in this video, we're going to discuss the difference between a catch bubble and a drag bubble. Uh, the difference being that push bubbles or catch bubbles are laid out by interdiction destroyers, remain constant and permanent in space, and therefore need to be used with caution because they cannot be turned off once they have been activated, but are far more useful for laying warp traps for enemy fleets and other forces. Now, the reason for this is you can have a cheap destroyer put a catch bubble instead of a drag bubble in front of a gate between a warp out area and a gate landing area. And it can be just about anywhere, about a thousand kilometers off the gate. And if you make your bubble net wide enough, you will catch all ships that attempt to warp that line. Uh, we'll give a, a quick little drawing here in space. So imagine you have your gate there. And you have your warp in here. They're in the sun area and they're trying to come this way. Now, what you want to do is you want to set up a bubble somewhere in this area that'll cover kind of that cone of line. Sorry about my drawing, that it's not very great, but I'm doing what I can with what edi editing tools I have. So essentially, what we're going to do is, we're going to pretend there's a battle here at the sun. Our forces are in a fight right here, and we're actually cloaked up, probably sitting a couple hundred kilometers off, observing the battle, and waiting for a command to lay a trap at one of the exit gates. Now, you don't want to do this just at an exit gate, unless you're doing what's called skirting the gate with bubbles, which is similar to what a heavy interdictor does. You sit near the gate, you orbit it, and you lay down bubbles. We'll show that example after this next, the first example. So in the first example, you're sitting on grid cloaked with the fleet. And you hear your fleet commander give a command like, I need a catch bubble or a push bubble on the 1QZ TAC Y gate. So what you're going to do is, you're going to select warp to 100 to 50, somewhere in there. Now you see you cannot warp because you're cloaked. You're cloaked so that you cannot be targeted. You're on grid so that when you warp to an area, as soon as you land, your bubble will be on that magical line that I drew out for you a moment ago. You'll pop your cloak off. You'll go warp to 60, 70, 80, something like that. Maybe pop one of your inertial stabilizers if it's taken too long. And you'll land. Now you'll see you travel in this line as indicated by your little warp path here. When you land, the first thing you want to do is pop that bubble. You're going to pop the bubble, and you're going to approach the gate. As you're approaching the gate, you're going to do so slowly at first. Give your, your module here a moment to cycle. As it gets close to being done, you'll turn your propulsion mod on, prop mod on, and cycle it off. Now, if an enemy lands in this bubble, the first thing you do is tap away from space and pop your cloak. Because by the time you land, and by the time they land, most likely, you'll have time to cloak. You notice how I'm offline of the gate. This is what's going to protect me from getting killed as soon as they start rushing that gate or trying to fight our forces. If enemies do land in the bubble, you'll open your comms and you'll say, clear comms, clear comms, uh, some number of whatever type of ship, whether it's battleships, you can say hull types, like three materials just landed on the 1QZ gate, they landed in my bubble, and then you stop. You mute yourself again, you don't need to continue on from there, it's just making comms more confused. Now... The other thing you can do as an interdictor, as a light interdictor, is you can create a skirt around a gate. To do this, you come over to the gate and you want to burn to within 
10, 15 kilometers, and then orbit at around 13 or so. As you're orbiting, you're going to pop bubbles in a pattern. This skirt, as you notice, will encompass the gate outside of where you would spawn if you were to come through that gate. It'll catch things closer to the gate that try to warp to it, and it'll prevent things from warping through the gate that come through from the other side. This is useful because it can prevent an enemy force from having a hidden reinforcement on the other side of a gate and coming through. You'll notice we have one bubble in front of the gate between us and the, between the gate and the sun, one bubble to the side, and as I rotate around with the timing of my bubble deployment device, I can actually spread four or five bubbles around this gate. Now, for fleet command purposes, most fleet commanders, if they want an interdiction sphere on something, they will probably say something like, I want a red bubble, because a red bubble indicates a warp stopping or interdiction bubble. You see the red color when you turn your bubble on, that's an interdiction bubble. Now, see, he landed, now he can't jump gate. Doesn't matter where he came from, he now has to burn to the gate. It shortens the effectiveness of the bubbles, but it does create a dual effect where things coming through the gate and things heading to the gate have to burn to use the gate. This is the whole point of being a sapper. You'll see with enough skills and propulsion jamming, you can make a three-bubble triangle around a gate. Two destroyers can make this gate completely impassable. Now, for another type of setup, say you warped to the gate, the battle's happening at the sun, and your fleet commander says he wants a catch bubble between the sun and the 1QZ gate. You're going to burn to zero to the gate, and then you're going to approach the sun. When you approach the sun from zero off the gate, you're going to monitor how far off the gate you get. Once you get about 15, 16 kilometers, pop a bubble. Now anything that lands at that gate as you're burning towards the sun is going to land in that bubble. You can create a chain of bubbles by simply approaching the gate. Again, now that you've already lined up to the sun, anything that lands on that line, and if you go back and forth between that line, it'll stay constant. And it'll land on it and in your bubble. So I've burned out to nearly 80 and I'm going to drop one more bubble far out. Now that I've got a skirt around and a far out bubble, anything warping from the sun has no choice but to burn manually to the gate. They could not, for instance, burn from here straight up and then warp because they'll hit my bubbles. They have to come straight through. The reason that you want them in this line is because you have a line here. That line indicates where they're going to come from. Now, they could also come from here, here, there, here, etc. If you don't have bubbles out here, out here, out there, etc., they're not going to stop anything. They'll just skate right by it. We'll do that in red. They'll skate right by your bubble and land straight at that gate. You notice how that line completely missed the edge of the bubble? That's because in traveling in warp, ships have almost like a cone, similar to like a flashlight putting out light. It starts small at the beginning and gets about 30 to 40 kilometers distance wide from this gate area here. So, we're looking down, straight down at the gate. We know that the sun is over here, in that straight line. One thing, another strategy, that gate bubblers can do, is create a fence of gates. A fence of gates allows you to block travel from a specific direction, we'll say right here, but still allow travel from another direction, we'll say this planet here. 
So what you're going to do is, with one or two or three other destroyer interdictors, you'll set up your line. You'll head towards that sun area. And you'll want to get maybe 100, 150 or so off the gate. The reason that you're doing this is so that you can set up a larger bubble mesh farther away from the gate. You still want a couple of light interdictors or a, just one light interdictor bubbling this line until you get to the area where you're going to create your mesh. This creates an instance where anything that lands in the mesh cannot simply burn to the outside of it and then safely short warp on field to the gate anyway. So, we're about 140 off the gate. From here, because you're carrying fuel, it's not super expensive. It's something you have readily available. You can keep these pre-split. You'll split off a single fuel and jettison it. If you do this right, you can actually have several destroyers sitting approximately this far off the gate. And you can actually jettison bubble a little one here, a little one there little one here, little one there. We'll do it from a different angle here so that they are in a line. Hope you understand that. Ooh. So they're in a line from left to right and top to bottom like this. Each ship is going to select orbit at about 10 which will give you a wider spread on your bubble. From there you'll drop one and you'll just orbit. You're setting up a catch for in case the enemy warps to a planet and tries to bounce to this gate. Now you'll see that I'm orbiting this so quickly that more than likely by the time I come back around my bubble will have misplaced off center. Don't worry about that, simply wait for a few seconds and pop your bubble once you make it to the other side of the item that you've placed in space. So as you rotate around and come back over to this side, you'll pop another one. And now you've successfully mashed two bubbles together to make a wider catch grid. The more of these you have positioned here, 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 and there, in reference to an object in space such as the sun. We'll give an example. Say we have a few skirted along this line, a few skirted along that line. You've essentially blocked off the entire enemy warp path from that area. Anything that comes through this path is going to land in these bubbles here. I know that my drawings aren't very good, but just, just bear with me. So anything that comes through this little vectored square here in space, if we block it off, they land in our bubbles. If we have a defensive fleet here at the gate, now their only option is to burn out of the gate and warp back. If we do this so that we have one of these set up at this gate and this gate, you can actually set things up in a way where ships that come into system to harass your local end up trapped here. And ships that jump in to try and reinforce them end up either trapped here in combat or trapped on the other side. Because in a situation where you have a force protecting a gate, you'll have your brawlers and fighters out here. And maybe a couple of sniper ships off on a side wing in their own bubble, or maybe right here. And you'll also have your interdictors here. But you'll have interdictors in your protection detail out front that stops inward warps and outward warps. Um, let's see, what else should I be covering here? Ah, yes. 
So one other thing we need to cover is creating or using your destroyer interdictor to prevent travel behind a fleet as a protection measure to stop enemy fleets from following your fleet. Usually you only need one or two sapper ships to do this, so it really isn't a job that we need a bunch of people for. What you'll do is you'll head out with the fleet, and as the fleet travels, you're going to wait at each gate. You're going to wait because if the fleet is organized properly and everyone is doing what they're supposed to do, blobs of ships are going to be traveling together, and you won't have stragglers necessarily. You are the sacrificial lamb that's there to protect and intercept anything that comes through chasing stragglers. You're going to wait at a gate. In this metaphorical situation, we are covering the rear of a fleet advancing through the ZDB system. The fleet has already engaged a target probably in one QZ and we're going to retreat through to Q4. Now because this is a pipe system, it only has two, two gates, that makes our job very easy. We only really need one, one destroyer to do it. So what we do is, when the fleet jumps gate, we stay here at this gate and we begin orbiting it at about 7 kilometers with our micro warp drive on. The fleet commander will give the fleet a align to command. You're not going to follow this. I don't actually know if you can still shut off that uh, command in the command infrastructure, but sappers, you should not be receiving go to commands. You should not be receiving warp to commands, warp fleet commands, or go as fleet commands. If you are, um, the fleet commander needs to either restructure their fleet and have their squad bosses issue the movement commands so that the important characters that are covering the flanks are not getting commands that they're not supposed to get. Or there needs to be a way that I'm, I'm not sure because I'm still learning the fleet user interface, but there needs to be a way to shut off automatically accepting warp fleet commands. Because the fleet is going to warp away to the gate Q4C. And we're going to stay on the gate 1QZ. Once you see all of the combat ships and logistics ships leave grid, you're going to start bubbling the gate. You're going to bubble the gate the same, you would, same way you would skirt the gate, except with one big difference. You'll, you'll wait for your forces to jump, if you've got a bunch of light interdictors, hopefully a bunch of you, after all of the fleet has warped, have dropped your bubbles, and you begin to approach the Q4 gate. Now, you'll know that you can't follow with the fleet because you now have a timer. Your weapons timer prevents you from jumping gates. However, after three or four light interdictors have successfully skirted this gate, we then, as a fleet, Warp to 100 off of the next gate. This is where we are the we are the hold the enemy behind us. We are the last stand, you know, the rear guard, so to speak. Our sacrifices are meant to be to save the fleet. So once we've warped to 100, the first person that lands is going to drop a bubble and begin to approach gate. Oh, not jump gate, approach gate. It's okay if you misclick, you're in a bubble, so it's not going to make you jump the gate. You got a crime timer, you couldn't do that if you wanted to. So, it, just approach the gate. Now, you're all going to land together, most likely as a group. The second destroyer is going to immediately prop mod on, burn out of your bubble, and drop another one. Each of you is going to successfully drop bubbles, or successively, sorry, wrong word, you're going to successively drop bubbles in a line as you retreat towards the gate. Now, any ships that jump in here, they're either going to aggress you and get themselves stuck here on this side of the gate, 
or they're going to have to burn through your bubbles to the gate. Once you actually are within 15 kilometers of the gate, you still have your crime timer, you're in danger, in danger of being warped in on. You can orbit the gate at like 20 kilometers. I don't really suggest that unless you're by yourself. What I suggest doing is having your squad kind of designate a direction. If you're looking at the gate from where you warped, somebody go left, somebody go right, somebody go above, and somebody go beneath. As you're burning out, you activate your cloak, and you just wait for your weapons timer. One or two of you may come into comms then at that point and report enemies that have warped in and landed on the bubble. Say, three Macarials are chasing the fleet. The sappers have stopped them at the Q4 gate. The fleet commander will then thank you for that information most likely and command their fleet to take actions accordingly. You're going to stay behind. In this, in this pretend situation, you may have a bunch of reds in system. You're not going to stop all of them from jumping that gate. But what you can do is you can stop them from reaching that gate quickly. If it comes to the point where the enemy fleet is coming to this gate and your fleet commander is not coming back to reinforce or save you, do not decloak and go down in a blaze of glory. It's not worth it. Simply stay cloaked. Burn away from the gate like you already are, and maybe align to a safe celestial. Maybe line up to the outgate on the other side. You can then, as an autonomous player, as a sapper, as long as we haven't lost all of our sappers, you can open your star map, and you can find, you know that they're going to Q4, and they're probably going to end up going to either Q Nash or Fortax C. You can regroup with the fleet in a fast travel destroyer by simply going back through the 1QZ gate. That would require you to probably run enemy gate camps if they have them, or bypass enemy fleets if they're there. However, that's the benefit of being in something that is so fast, that as a fast travel destroyer, you can actually... We'll, act, we'll set up a hypothetical here. The fleet commander had you bubble the Q4 gate. You've secured the immediate danger of the exit. You know that they're going to Q Nash. What you're going to do is you're actually going to set destination, looking at your map, to 4TAC C M8 I, and you're going to run whatever gate camps are there. So, assuming that the enemy has not landed at the gate and you're not currently in danger, you can lose cloak. You lose cloak and wait until your cloak timer comes down a little bit because it's going to take you some time to get to the gate and you want to be able to cloak again once you jump through that gate on the other side or if you land in a bubble in this solar system on that gate. So now that we're at 10 seconds, we're going to give it the jump gate command. And do not use autopilot. You're using your autopilot to tell you which gates to go through. You're not actually autopiloting. As you go, you're actually not paying attention to the star map at all. Because if you're opening your star map, you're not watching what's on grid. You want to be safe on grid. That's why you're going to set route to an area around. The fleet's going to move slowly. So by now, they've probably already reached Q Nash. They've set up another area where they feel safe engaging the enemy, or you know that they're retreating, you've successfully stopped the enemy from following them. So we're going to hit jump here, but we're also going to continue as though it was no gate camp on this gate. Okay, we're safe. We're fast travel there. In the next scenario, there's a bubble on the gate. So we've jumped the gate, and there's an interdiction bubble on the other side. What do you do? Oh, sounds like a doorbell. So you'd say, what do you do, right? Maybe there is some ships here that are interdictors. 
and you need to go. You've got a few seconds before they can decloak you. Maybe they're not actively searching for you. You're like, okay, I need to go to Q Nash. We're going to set destination. You know, autopilot's going to take you in a straight line. It's going to want you to go to Q4C through one of the backdoor systems, one of the backdoor gates. But you can't get out of this bubble because if you try to, you'll die. Well, here's what you do. You watch for when your enemy is as far away from you, the direction away from them as best you can. We'll say they're there. You're going to burn away from the gate by looking in that direction, double tapping, activating your prop mod, and immediately tapping your cloak. Now, you'll lose speed immediately. And if they're successful at doing what they do, gate camping, they'll have spotted you and will be making attempts to come over and try and decloak you. You just keep, keep away from them. Manually pilot until you're out of the bubble. We'll say the bubble doesn't move off the gate to chase you. Maybe they're still hoping that there's remnants of the fleet nearby. So you just burn until you reach near the edge of the bubble. Once you've reached near the edge of the bubble, you can then deactivate your cloak, pop your micro warp drive, hit your autopilot real quick, and pop one of your inertial stabilizers. This should bring your sapper interdictor into a near instant cloak into that next gate. This is dangerous for two reasons. If you pop that cloak off, without waiting or bouncing to a planet to allow it to, to come off timer, you'll land at the gate like so and most likely only have a few seconds on your timer but still be in danger of being interdicted by a second bubble. <clears throat> That's only dangerous because if you land in a second bubble without your cloak available, you won't be able to cloak and burn away. But at the same time, if you land in a bubble that's well planned out to decloak ships, it doesn't matter whether you're in a Kav op ship or not. They're going to decloak you and you'll be in immediate danger anyway. So it's kind of a workaround. You can use safe warps to avoid drag bubbles, which is for a whole different video. And you can use safe warps to get a round bubble anti-cloaking so that you can take a cloaked ship and warp and burn into the bubble, which is, again, another video I'm going to do uh, later on in the week, more likely. Um, but this actually is the end of the sapper positioning video as far as moving between star targets. There will be more videos on how to work with other sapper destroyers to set up proper skirting and proper positioning to create a mesh of bubbles and to create a bubble wall. Um, there's another tactic that uses bubble ships destroyers on grid as a sort of fast cavalry to get around an opponent and prevent them from warping by essentially yeeting yourself into them and dropping interdiction spheres because they stay in there whether you're alive or not. So another tactic that's often used that we don't use nearly as often as maybe we could would be to send very fast, competent interceptor pilots to chase down enemy cruisers, battleships, and battle cruisers, destroyers, and non-interceptor frigates. Chase them down, get close to them on the other side of them, and then on grid short warp eight or nine light interdictors to that interceptor that squad can then burn straight to the enemy forcing them to change direction giving the main fleet a chance to kind of